Hello and welcome to CS Guitars, the science of loud. This video will be a bit of an appendix to the previous video, dynamic versus condensers. What's the difference? Because a couple of things came up in the comments section which I want to address sort of immediately and uh, ear out and get them out of the way. Now, firstly, some people had a little bit of a complaint that I didn't mention ribbon microphones in a video about dynamic and condenser microphones. Uh, clues in the title, guys. Uh, the reason I didn't do this is, actually there's a few reasons. Firstly, I wanted to keep it strictly to dynamics and condensers. I didn't want to muddy the water with a third type of microphone in there. It's sort of how education works. You go incrementally and you build it up. But also, I've already got a video dedicated to ribbon microphones. It's a little bit older, so you know, maybe you missed it. But uh, yeah, it's there uh, where I'm repairing a Resla Sound ribbon microphone from the 60s, which had a, a popped ribbon, so I'm creating a new ribbon for it. And uh, it's quite a good video because it gives all the information about how a ribbon microphone works and its history within the music industry. So that video has already been made, it's there. Uh, there's a link to it coming on a card and I'll have a link in the description. Go and watch that one, that should uh, tide you over. I'll definitely be making another ribbon microphone video sometime in the future. Uh, you know, I, I love ribbon microphones. They're probably my favorite type of microphone. I find them fascinating in the way that they work and the engineering that goes into them. Um, so they're, them not being included in this previous video wasn't for me being stupid or ignorant or biased or any of the other words some old person used on the internet to try and have a go at me. It's purely that it wasn't relevant to that video and I've already made a video about it not so long ago. So yeah, go check out that other video and um, maybe I'll do another one in the future if that pleases your highness. Anyway, that's not what I really want to talk about in this video. There was another comment from a viewer called Chris, I believe, who had a microphone, a condenser microphone, with a whole bunch of switches on it and he didn't know what they did and asked the question, you know, why doesn't anyone explain this stuff? Uh, so I had to take a look at the microphone um, that he had and I was like, oh yeah, that's just your polar patterns and your high pass filters and your pad. And his response was, yeah, but what do any of those words mean? So, okay. Maybe we need to back up a little bit further and uh, have an explanation of what these standard switches are on condenser microphones. So I've got my NT2A condenser microphone here from Rode and uh, as you can see on the front panel there are three mini toggle switches and beside them are pictograms and numbers, essentially hieroglyphs and if you've never really dealt with microphones before you'll be looking at this going yeah I, I don't get it. I remember when I first got this microphone I looked at these things and went I don't know what they are and even if I did, I don't know how they'd benefit me. So we're going to talk to them very, very briefly right now. So we'll start from the bottom up, as I think the bottom is the most easy to explain. You see this switch has 0, minus 5 and minus 10, depending on which position the switch is in. This is your pad. What a pad does is reduces the level of the signal coming out of the microphone, drops its volume, essentially. So if you were just sitting yourself recording a voiceover and you're talking at normal room volume, normal conversation level volume, you're not making a lot of noise, there's no need for you to switch the pad on to minus five or minus 10 decibels. But if you're recording a very loud sound source, say you're putting this microphone in front of a roaring guitar amp or something like that, and you're gonna get a very, very loud signal at this microphone, then if you didn't pad it down, if you didn't reduce its signal, then what comes out to your recorder or your interface or getting sent live somewhere might be so loud that it's distorting and clipping which you don't want. So if you've got a loud sound source and you want to ensure you're not getting any clipping, you would flick the microphone to minus 10 decibels, for example, and that way the signal level coming out of the microphone is reduced and you don't risk your audio interface or your recorder or whatever live desk you're using having a clipped signal. It's just a really good thing to have in a microphone if you know you're recording a louder sound source, you can actually reduce the signal level coming out of the mic. That's all that's doing, so zero is zero pad, no, you're no, no reduction at all, minus five is minus five dBs, you're taking away five decibels from the signal, and then minus ten is you're reducing it even further, you're just going to buy ten decibels. <laughs> so that's, that's, all, that's all the pad's doing, it's just reducing the signal level coming out of the mic. The next switch has these funny little angled lines and the numbers read 0, 40 and 80. What's this? This is your high pass filter. A high pass filter allows the high frequencies to pass through the filter without being affected and it rolls off the bass end. So what it's doing is it's, when it's seeing all the frequencies come in, it's going high stuff you can go through, bass stuff you shall not pass. Uh, so I know that people get a bit confused about this terminology, high pass filter, oh does that mean it blocks the high frequencies? No, high pass filters, high frequencies pass, 
you cannot pass if you're low frequencies. Um, you might also hear these called out like a low frequency shelf. It shelves the low frequencies, takes them away. So that's what this is doing. It's actually reducing the low frequency content. This particular microphone uh, will block anything below uh, 40 hertz and also below 80 hertz. Now, why is this important? Why would you want that on a microphone? Well, a lot of the unwanted noise you're likely to get in a microphone comes from low frequency sounds, vibrations through the floor, um, machinery running somewhere, which is this low frequency rumble, this low frequency uh, hum sort of sound. And typically the sound sources that you'll be recording, like voice or instruments, don't go as low as uh, below 40 or below 80 hertz, typically. But these low frequency rumbles will, and those will pick up in the mic. So if you're wanting to save yourself some time in post-production, or if it's going out live and you want to just have a clean signal, then you can actually uh, flick the switch to just take out any frequencies below 40 or below 80 hertz. And that just might clear up some low frequency noises that are being picked up by the environment, by vibrations through the floor, through the stand, the microphone, etc. Uh, it's just a really handy thing to have on a microphone along with the pads. So if you're recording a loud sound source with a lot of vibration, you can reduce the level and uh, reduce the low frequencies that the microphone picks up. Again, two very handy things depending on the application you're going to be using the microphone for. Right, the last one's probably the most confusing for people who have never used a microphone before. We can see it's just it's just symbols. We've got a circle, we've got a descending Pac-Man, and we've got like a number eight. What, what, what's any of that? Well, these are polar patterns or pickup patterns of the microphone. Now, these symbols for polar patterns are essentially two-dimensional representations of the three-dimensional space that a microphone will pick up from. So let's just go from the circle here. That's to represent an omnidirectional microphone. Omni meaning everywhere. The microphone will pick up equally from all directions. There's two diaphragms, one on the front and one on the rear. With both of these active and in the omni position, so the switch down, it will pick up sources all around about the microphone in all directions equally. So if this microphone was active right now, I could speak to it from here, or I could speak to it from over this direction, or from the front or from the back, and the microphone would pick up the same from everywhere. This is a really great setting if you've got just one microphone and you want to record, say, a little jam band or something, you've got a whole bunch of people in a room, you stick the microphone in the middle of the room, set it to the Omni setting, and it picks up equally from everywhere and you get a nice sort of mono recording of everybody. Or maybe you're doing like a podcast or you had people around about a table for a conference or a meeting and you wanted to pick up what everyone was saying, you could set a microphone in the middle with an Omni setting and it would pick up from all around about it. That's great in those situations. The middle little symbol, it looks like Pac-Man or a bum, as some person said in the comments. This is cardioid, um, which means heart-shaped. Cardi as in cardiogram, cardiac arrest, all that. Things to do with the heart and oid as in like cuboid or ovoid or, you know, those sort of things. It's the shape of a heart. Now, what this does is it means that it picks up from one direction and not the other. So in the case of this microphone, if I set it to the cardioid setting, the front diaphragm becomes uh, sort of active and it's picking up everything from the front and then it's rejecting sound from the behind the microphone. So if there was a source in front of it, you would get a lot of sound. But if I was to sit behind the microphone, it wouldn't pick up what I'm saying because it's really only picking up from the front. Uh, it's called cardioid heart shape because the three dimensional shape essentially would look like a, a heart, if you sort of look like this way, it would cave in at the top and then round itself at the bottom like that. Um, that's probably a really bad way of trying to demonstrate that, but it's essentially heart shaped. And um, so it's essentially a directional microphone. It allows you to pick up from one direction pretty strongly and reject sound from the other side. When would you want to use cardioid? Well, probably most of the time, actually. Most times when you're recording sound, you're trying to record it from a certain source and you don't want to pick up sounds coming from all around about. For example, I've got my Lewitt mic up here recording my voice right now, and it's set to cardioid to pick up things coming from uh, beneath it, essentially. So my voice is going up and hitting the, the diaphragm at the front. What I don't want to happen is the sound to bounce off my ceiling and come back to the back side of the microphone. So I've got the back side of the microphone, the rejection side of the cardioid, aiming at the ceiling, so any bounce back off of that isn't being picked up by the microphone particularly, and it's only hearing the voice coming directly at it. If you were singing in a singing booth, uh, with a microphone like this, you'd want to face it like this, and you wouldn't want sound bouncing off and coming back. Necessarily. There might be some situations where you do want that room sound to add in, but in most cases, you'd want to pick up the source directly in front. Again, if you're recording a guitar amp, you don't want to hear the room behind it, you just want to hear the sound coming out of the speaker, so you'd put it to set it to cardioid and put it up against the speaker like that. 
and that way you're only picking up what's coming from in front of it. Cardioid is probably your most used setting on a microphone. And finally, you have this figure of eight, and I think you can probably work out by now what it means uh, from the other two. It means that you're picking up from the front, you're picking up from the back, but you're not picking up from the sides of the microphone. So this would be great, I guess, if you want to do sort of like a, a mock stereo thing. If you want to have the microphone sitting there, you want to pick up things from the left, sounds from the right, but you don't want anything in the middle. Um, you could do that. There's other uses you could do for it, but it could be really useful if you for some reason want to pick up sounds from behind and in front, but not from the sides. Maybe great if there's two people talking and you have that in between them and you're not picking up any sounds coming from elsewhere in the room. You're really only picking up from the two sources. Could be good if you're trying to have a conversation uh, in a more busy environment, something like that. Now, this is by no means an exhaustive list of polar patterns. Uh, there are many uh, in-between sort of settings, if you like, but these are the three most common you'll find on, on microphones. Now, I'm going to do a video on polar patterns at some point in the future because the microphone that I've got up here that I'm using right now, the Lewitt 640TS, is very, very clever. It's got a dual output situation where you can record from both of the diaphragms at once, front and back, and then in software, in post, after the recording, you can change the pickup pattern of the microphone using the, uh, the plug-in software and it lets you blend from one uh, to the other of polar patterns. So you can go from the cardioid in the front through Omni right back to the cardioid on the back. It's very clever uh, for recording a whole thing and then experimenting with what pickup patterns do what and how they sound in a room or environment or for whatever you're recording. So there's a lot more I can talk about uh, polar patterns at some stage. We'll look into that and do a video all about that at some later point. But hopefully you've got the point here um, that this is just different ways the microphone can pick up sound from different directions and um, which one you use is dependent on what kind of situation you're wanting to record. Are you wanting to record everything in the whole room or are you only wanting to pick up things directly in front of the microphone? That's what you need to think about when choosing your polar patterns. Hopefully that's answered some of your questions about what these switches on a microphone body do and now you can tackle this a bit better if you're new to microphones. I understand that this video was a bit freeform and unscripted and it doesn't benefit from my usual sort of animated graphics uh, and explanations that you would typically find in a CS Guitars video, but I wanted to make this just a quick appendix to the previous video so you're not sitting there left wondering about these things if you are picking up a microphone for the first time and wondering what any of these things do. Anyway, that's all for now, guys. Keep it loud, and I'll uh, see you in the next one.